Linda. Thank you for joining me. To celebrate St. Piran's Week, I will be reading a Cornish-inspired story every day. Today's story is called The Mousel Mice and the Theatre by the Sea. The author is Michelle Cartledge and the publishers, Mabicron, have given us permission to read the story to you. So let's have a look inside and see what happens. The morning sun sparkles on Mousel Harbour and the mice family are here again for another lovely seaside holiday. This year they've got a new baby mouse and it's called Lola. Looking out across the beautiful harbour they see the big ship as it sails out to the islands for the day. They're excited to see Gardener Mouse with his wheelbarrow full and Fisher Mouse with his freshly caught mackerel. In the mouse restaurant, Fisher Mouse offers Chef his catch of the day. And meanwhile, the mouse family enjoy a wonderful breakfast as they plan their day out. Father Mouse explains, later this morning, we will meet Skipper in his boat on Mousel Quay. And we're going to go on a long sea journey to a very special place, the Miracle Theatre by the Sea. Looks like a nice breakfast, doesn't it? Strolling around the village, the mouse family meets a very happy, quacky, chatty little duck called Dylan. He's waddling around in a beautiful seaside garden and he's so very sweet. Lola and her big brother Jack and her big sister Molly spend time watching the little duck who tells them all about the mermice out in the bay. Then it's time to head off and meet Skipper in his boat down on Mousel Quay. The mouse family are all aboard and their little boat edges out through the narrow hole in the harbour wall. That's how Mousel got its name, explains Skipper, because it's like a real mouse hole. As the little boat follows the coastline, Mousel behind them becomes smaller and smaller. And it all looks so very different from the sea. There they are, can you see them? They've come out through the small little gap. On the way to the theatre, the Mouse family spot a beautiful sandy cove with a little wooden su summer house built into a cave. There they can see some mouse friends relaxing, painting and enjoying the sunshine. Some oyster catchers gather on the rocks nearby, picking their way through the seaweed, looking for any tastier morsels. They all think the theatre looks fantastic from the sea. Skipper waves goodbye and calls, have a wonderful time and I'll be back here for you later on. The mouse family wave back happily as they climb the winding coast path to reach the theatre. Lots and lots of steps. Up at the theatre, the mouse gardeners are busy pl planting and working hard to keep the gardens looking beautiful. Sometimes the weather is very wild up on the cliffs, so they need extra help from a few sprightly mouse garden fairies who are flying about in the sunshine. Now, if you look very carefully, you can see some of these garden fairies. There's one and there's another. And I can tell you there are a lot more, so perhaps you can get the book and see. In the dressing room, the mouse performers prepare to go on stage. You all look fantastic, cool and fabulous, my darlings, says the wardrobe mistress. Good luck for the performance. It's your five minute call. You have five minutes. The play they're going to see is called A Mouse Summer Dream, a fairy tale of delight, written by Sweet William Mouse. The audience take up their places and the mouse family sit comfortably in the front row and the show begins. The mouse fairy dancers sweep across the stage, swirling and twirling, while Lucky, the mouse minstrel, plays the flute. Princess Sunflower meets her Prince Sunshine. I have to depart my travels for a while, he says, but soon I will return for you, dear, dear princess. Wild Rose, the mouse witch, strides onto the stage with her three sparkly cats, Diamond, Ruby and Sapphire. One, two, three. They take up their stage positions around her, waiting for her command. You say the prince will return, she cackles and casts her witchery doubts. 
I don't know, I don't know. These mousy fairy tales of mousy hopes and mousy dreams. Chance will be a fine thing. She swirls round the stage with her cats at her tail. Ha, 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 she cackles. Meow, 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 say the cats. From behind the stage, Princess Sunflower her hears it all. What a wicked witch. I know my bit, dear prince will return. As the princess sits pondering, the mouse audience are delighted to spot the mermice splashing and dancing around in the waves behind her. And down below the cliff, unseen by the audience, the mermouse sea queen sits on her royal rock throne with her codfish butler by her side. She watches the fabulous mermice display. Prince Sunshine does indeed return and offers his hand of friendship to Princess Sunflower. She's delighted and proclaims, what more could any mouse princess ask for? Lucky plays the flute while the mouse fairies perform the dance of the sunflowers. The prince and the princess begin their journey of happy times, happy days and happy adventures. All the cast come back on stage for the finale. The mouse audience love the show and clap loudly. It's been a great success, but now it's time to leave the magical theatre by the sea. The mouse family make their way back down the winding coast path to meet Skipper, who's waiting for them in his boat. Arriving back again after another exciting sea journey, Skipper ties the boat up alongside the quay. It's been a wonderful journey to the theatre by the sea. But it's nice to be back in Mosul with the sound of herring gulls all around them. The Mouse family climb up the harbour wall steps to a lovely welcome back from Fisher Mouse and their special new friend, Dylan the Little Duck. They make their way back to their home in the village and the very happy, quacky little duck follows his new mouse friends all the way back up to his seaside garden. I hope you enjoyed that story and perhaps you know where the magical theatre by the sea is. Do Guinness. See you soon. <laughs>